Hi everyone, Jolene here from Bookworm Adventure Girl. I hope you are all well. To those who are new, thanks for checking out my channel. April is National Poetry Month and this year's theme is resilience. Today I am going to talk about 10 Canadian poetry collections that I've read and that I have that I think have themes of resilience. Um, you may have heard of some of these poets, but my hope is that some of these poets and writers will be new to you as well. This is the 23rd National Poetry Month and the collections that I have chosen, I have read for the first time this month with the exception of one of them, which uh, was a reread for me. The theme of resilience is in all of the collections with regard to climate change, mental health, systemic racism and prejudice, uh, grief and mourning, relationships and uh, well, life. So first up is 77 Fragments of a Familiar Ruin by Thomas King. And I love Thomas King, but I had never read his poetry collections. And in fact, this might be his first poetry collection that he's published. Um, I'm not sure, but it was incredible. Thomas King has a very playful sense of humor, and this comes across in these poetry, uh, poetry fragments that he calls them. They're both in the wordplay and in the execution of some of the content. He is brilliant at bringing both his humor and difficult topics together. So one line I'd be chuckling and the next line would be so profound and I'd have to stop and think about it for a while. So this is just an excellent collection of poetry that sheds light on um, our earth and environment and the issues in Canada regarding Indigenous peoples. Pearl Piri or Piri, I'm not really sure how she says her last name, um, is the author of Footlights. I think I'm going to go with Piri. Uh, she is a new writer to me. She is a self-described queer concussed writer living in rural Quebec. And at first I wasn't sure about these poems, but then I started recognizing the talent by the second part in particular. I thought that was, they were very impressive. Um, her poetry talks about our connection to nature. It is philosophical in a way, and it also has like, reflective and meditative moments. Next is Grief and Loss and Love and Sex by Laura Margaret Margeson. This collection is born from Grief and Loss when Laura's sister dies by suicide. And several of the poems deal with that in particular. And I love the structure of her poems. The titles are all at the bottom of each of the poem, which I thought was uh, interesting. The poems are also about healing. So the collection doesn't leave you in the despair of mourning. And then Depression and Other Magic Tricks is by Sabrina Benayam. And the poems in this collection are mostly about relationships and mental illness. Sabrina experiments with uh, structure in her poems, and there are some poems that explicitly connect to other poems, and then some that implicitly connect. Um, there are some really creative expressions and descriptions that she uses, and uh, it was an enjoyable read. Love Her Wild by Atticus, uh, known as Atticus Poetry. Atticus is a Canadian poet who stays anonymous. He wears a mask when signing books or doing readings. And even when I've seen him on like Zoom meetings or interviews, he has a picture up on his screen. So Atticus is a fairly new poet to me, but he has become very popular on Instagram. He has like over one and a half million followers. Um, I really didn't know what to expect with this collection and I ended up loving it. It is about love, a woman, and life and its crazy adventures. And I thought that this book was beautiful. It has um, pictures, I'll show you, throughout uh, with each poem. And not with each poem, but a lot of the poems. And each poem is just a few lines sharing a, a feeling or a thought. Um, and I found myself really just appreciating the words and images that it conjured up in my mind. And I thought that this was definitely worth reading and I do hope to read uh, more of his collections now that I know about this. 
Um, the next poem is probably someone that people know of, or at least know of his songs, and it's Leonard Cohen, who is from Montreal. Um, he's best known as a singer-songwriter, but he uh, was also a poet and novelist, and um, I finally read one of his poetry books. <laughs> I chose to read Book of Longing, and this edition is a limited edition of uh, this collection. It was published in the year right after his death, so 2016, 2017. Um, and it also includes drawings throughout with the poems. Um, the poems range from very funny to spiritual, political. They talk about death, sexuality, and relationships. So I think if you're a, uh, a fan of Cohen, then this would be a good collection. Um, and even if you don't know much about him, it's a collection worth checking out. Um, another collection that includes illustrations is... Um, from the poet Hannah Sh Shafi or Shafi called It Begins With The Body. Um, her family immigrated to Canada from Dubai. So that experience of fitting in, self-consciousness, uh, it comes out of, into her poetry. And I think that this collection is a debut book for her. And the poems deal with uh, obviously themes of the body, faith, identity, and relationships. And as I said, there are some illustrations throughout the book. The next poet is a favorite of mine and I was introduced to his poetry the same year and actually in the same class that I was introduced to Margaret Atwood. Um, we were studying his very famous poem David which is included in the essential Earl Burney um, by obviously Earl Burney. Uh, the poem David captivated me it is about two young men who go mountain climbing. David is more experienced and he's teaching the other man and then tragedy strikes. And Earl Burney himself, uh, he was a mountain climber and his poetry definitely speaks to his respect of nature and of Canada. And this collection puts um, all of the selected poems in the order that they were published. So there is a sense of how his writing has changed and developed over time. So if you get a chance to read Earl Burney, I highly recommend it. And if you only choose one poem, then David would be my suggestion. The next poem I want to talk about um, is brand new to me. I received this poetry collection from ZG Stories and the University of Regina Press. And as I was reading Red Obsidian, uh, new and selected poems by, St I don't know if it's Stephen or Stephen Tor, um, I kept thinking he's like a modern day Earl Burney. This collection includes poems from his previous collection called Man Living on a Side Creek, and also several from his other, another previous collection called Iron Fever. And then there are probably about 40 or 50 new poems in a section called Cr uh, Crowberries and that's divided into four segments. The reason I compare him to Earl Burney is because of the way he describes nature, the land, and our relationship to it. So with Earl Burney's poetry, I can read a poem for like the 20th or even 30th time and still get something new out of it. And I think the same is true of uh, Stephen Torr. And I'm surprised I haven't heard of him sooner and I'm so pleased that I have now been introduced to him. And last but certainly not least, I am going to share one of my favorite poetry collections from my childhood, and that is Alligator Pie by Dennis Lee. This collection is just full of fun and playful poems, and this particular edition has very colorful illustrations. Um, I used to know a lot of these poems by heart as a kid. Um, two of my favorites are Alligator Pie, obviously, um, and In Kamloops. Dennis Lee is a Canadian literary icon. Um, so if you have kids or you just want to check it out, I don't think that you'd be disappointed in this because it is great fun. So those are my most recent poetry collections that I have been working through. Of course, I've also been reading a lot of poetry collections by Margaret Atwood. So if you are interested in those, then you can check out the Mondays with Margaret series. And I can also uh, leave links below to some of those videos that are just about her poetry. I will also leave um, a link to the six best poetry collections I read in 2020. There are some Canadian poets 
on that list, but there are others as well. So you can check that out too if you haven't already. Let me know if you have read any poetry during April, the National Poetry Month, or if there are any poets or collections you would add to this list. I look forward to chatting with you in the comments. Thanks again for watching. I hope you enjoy the rest of your day and don't forget to make every day an adventure.